Oh my God, Mr. you for joining me here at HLC Studios. Uh, here in the city of Plano, Texas, we're going to start it. Uh, try to wrap up that series we've been teaching about over in the book of uh, Luke chapter 4. Uh, Master, we have toiled. You know, in this particular scripture, we talk about Peter's kind of find himself you know, in a little rebellious state, but at the same time, Jesus got to prove to him that this is what I call you to do. Especially when we look back on the book of Mark chapter 5. You see the work that Christ called him to do based on what he is already doing as a man of God and to the point that he never can go back doing that work, which is a fisherman. So we're going to read over in the book of Luke chapter 5. We're going to start over here from the top of Luke chapter 5. We're trying to get this thing out the way. And it's the last part of the series. I hope you guys um, enjoy it. Give me a minute. All right, Father God, we thank you. We bless you for this opportunity that's coming for your throne as always. Now look what the mouth of this priest as it goes forth. Take the rally now, my boys. Father God, I speak to your people about the revelation of words that this man is going through. And let it be a demonstration of how it is should be in their lives. And never put their hands down from the word, but continue on. God will give them the strength that they need so long as they be obedient. So Father God, we ask you for the obedience in our life and continue to move forward that we be more disciplined in the things that you called us to do others may follow behind us according to the book of James 13, 34, and 35. Love them as I have loved you, but this they may know that we are your disciples. Father God, I thank you for this time, this moment. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord. Amen. Let's go over to the book of Luke chapter 5. And let's look at Luke chapter 5. We scout this out here. Luke chapter 5 says, The came to pass that the people pressed upon him, and a hear the word of the Lord, and he stood by the lake of Gensert. And he saw two ships uh, standing by the lake, but the fishermen were going out of them and were fishing, or I'm sorry, or washing their nets. And he entered to one of the ships, which was called by Simon, and he prayed to him that he would thrust out a little from the land and sat down and he taught the people from the ship. Amazing story just on the end right there. In that first part of that particular scripture, we go through it. Jesus declared, according to Mark chapter 5 and that 14 verse, that he called Peter from fishing. Now, this particular word we see down here as he goes and talks to Peter. Peter, somewhere in the, in the individual, got toiled. He got um, flustrated, not being able to see the fish. We go here to verse 4. And he declares in the verse 4, he said, when he left, when he, when he, when he left speaking, he said to Simon Peter, we said to Simon, launch out in the deep. And let down your nets for a drought. Now, in this particular scripture, he said, Let down your nets for a drought. He said, Nets, not a net. And Peter comes back, one of the words is they always do, kind of quick at the mouth. And Peter said unto the master, We have toiled all night and have caught nothing. Goes back to John chapter 21, when Peter was actually in a position uh, calling Zebedee, the same crew going back to fishing. They got out there and caught nothing. But Jesus shows up on the shoreline. And Chapter 21 of the King James Version, it tells them in the scripture, he said, look here, uh, have you any meat? They said, none. And Jesus said, cash in on the right side and that's you for fine. So obedience plays a proper role. Even though uh, in these various chapters we see over here in the fourth uh, uh, chapter, the first verse over here, he said, now when he had left speaking, he said to Simon Peter, let down your nets. For a draw. There should be more than one net going into the water. He says a continual same thing over here, I believe in the second verse, when the ship was standing by the lake, but the fishermen were going out of them and were washing their nets. Washing their nets. We see right here, we see the word of God saying, just speaking to them. They were actually uh, um, thrust out to the deep uh, and let down your nets. So Peter comes with the question, uh, Master, you know, we are toiled all night. You know, taking it nothing. That's frustration for a fisherman. 
you know, watch some of these fishing shows that comes on. But what you got to worry about, even though a situation in your own head looks critical, but now you got to look to Jesus, who's the author to finish your faith. By the joy of the Lord, the power declared, according to the scriptures, you got the ability to speak and declare, call things to be not what they were. The word of God said, Peter said, nevertheless, at your word, no, she'll be at your will. And I will let down the net. And he said, a net. That's still somewhat of a rebellious state. If you're washing many nets, then you wash down you throw out all the nets. Now, he must didn't know who he was talking to. Evidently, he may have did, but at the same time, you're going to find out how Peter's going to fall under conviction in this situation. The Word of God says on the sixth verse, and when they had, uh, they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. This one net, but fish is. If we go down the nets, you would have caught all the fish is. And it says that he broke, the net broke. Now, this is the indication that he caught so much that sometimes this is how we miss our blessings. When God's telling us to do something, we got this one track man type spirit that can't nobody tell us nothing, can't nobody do nothing for us. We know it all. And then all of a sudden we find ourselves missing our blessings or missing our seasons which God has in store for us because we feel that we can't bounce off of other Christians to find out more about the Spirit in terms of growing us higher and higher in the work we're doing. So we find out about a lot of people who come down there and tell them something, they don't want to tell you nothing, they don't listen, they don't put in their trunk all grumpy or mean and just go on about their business. And I see them up there later on, I just laugh at them. And then what God did it. And then and then I just don't say nothing. Keep on moving. The word of God said in the seventh verse, and they beacon unto the partners who are out there. See, you know, Peter out there was actually washing his nets. But it said they beacon to the partners which were out there, which was in the other ships. So they was out there fishing, and that they should come and help them. And they came and filled the boat, uh, filled both the ship. So they begin to sink. Now, this is the word God talks about uh, when you be obedient, run over blessings. Where God point to your bosom. We see that right here, right now. The word of God comes over in this particular eighth verse. And Simon Peter saw, saw it and he fell down to his knees. That's when guilt comes in. Because when we look at Peter, he's supposed to let down a few nets. He let down one net. He was stubborn about going back out because he thought he knew the water. But he didn't understand who he was talking to. He said, you looking at the resurrection. If I tell you to drop the net in the water, the fish going to be there. Remember I told you John 21. If you drop the net right there, there's going to be some fish there. Now, based on what y'all think, it's based on what Jesus had in store. So she got that she got that net and pulled that net up. And the Bible says, sunk the ship. And Peter didn't understand the word that God gave him. Now he's in the position of laying on his knees in the eighth verse and asking the Lord to forgive him. And we move away from him because he's a sinful man. Well, well you ain't worry about that. If you got a problem, come to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? If that's something that alienates you, then bring it to Jesus. Jesus is not going to run off any sinner. According to the word of God, he may have trusted his word to the point of understanding his own analogy. But Christ had to come show him that he saw that Christ that God was working through Christ to do the work that he was doing. So when he done it, Peter looked upon himself as being shameful. But well, God don't want you to like say once again, John, I won't be redundant on this. God don't want you to be sinful or shameful about the things you have failed from. He says in the ninth verse, and he was astonished at all that were with him at the drought of the fishes. Many this was there, or the drought of the fishes which they had taken. This is a powerful story. We talk about the process and he's in the 10th verse. Peter comes to his mindset. He said, it was so that James and John and the son of Zebedee, which were his partners with Simon in Jesus said unto Simon, fear not for henceforth thou shalt catch fish. Now we're fishing in a man. Same thing Jesus called the first part of the You know, sometimes we find ourselves going around and blocking stuff. We don't want to do what Christ calls us to do. We got another wine. We're going to reconnect something in a different way. And hope we get better performance or whatever out of issue. We don't know what just do things that we're supposed to do. We just, we just shoot stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then to find out the works for us, and then we say, oh, I didn't know that. But I tell you, we trust God through the process in your homes, in your house, whatever it may be. And I pray that God give you brain the teeth. I mean, I'm telling you, man, oh, God, you bring new eyeballs, bring new hips, bring new lips, whoever it may be, new hair. 
You know, the boys, new shoes, new home, new houses, uh, clear up every operational illness that's coming into effect in the name of Jesus. And it's clear, just speak and call things. That the peace be on the earth, that all the men and women God who are engaging in this, in this racial stuff, God is just going to make it right in the name of Jesus because he's the power of all things. Amen? And he's going to get some, some work done for me, okay? So long as you don't mess with him, man, he'll okay, okay? Hey, look, I love you guys. Y'all take care.